This is part 57 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to load JSON data from the server using jQuery get function. This is continuation to part 56, so please watch part 56 before proceeding. First, let's look at the syntax of get function. This function has four parameters. The first three parameters are similar to the load function. The fourth parameter is data type. This parameter specifies the type of data that we are expecting from the server. The data type can be XML, JSON, script, or HTML. This means using the get function we can work with any type of data, be it XML, JSON, script, or HTML. If we don't specify the type of data that we are expecting explicitly, then by default, jQuery is going to make an intelligent guess. Let's understand this with an example. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. Notice we are using get function here, and this function is making a request to this page, gethelptext.aspx. And if you look at this page, this page is returning HTML data. But then, if you look at this get function, notice that we are only specifying the first three parameters, the URL to which we want to make the request, the data that we want to send to the server, and the callback function. But we are not specifying the type of data that we are expecting from the server. So we are not specifying this fourth parameter data type. But in spite of that, the application continues to work as expected. Right? So if we want, we can be explicit and specify the data type. So here we are expecting the type of data to be HTML. So I can specify HTML like that. So let's save the changes, reload this page, and it should continue to work in the same manner. Look at that. So now let's see how to retrieve JSON data from the server. So the first thing that we have to do is modify this gethelptext.aspx page to return JSON data. At the moment, it is returning HTML. So for this page to return JSON data, we can get rid of this div element because we are no longer returning the HTML. And within the code behind file, the first thing that I'm going to do is create a class. Let's call this help text. And this class is going to have two public properties. And both of them are going to be of type string. Let's call the first property key. So this property is going to hold the help text key. And the second property, let's call it text. This property is going to hold our help text associated with the key. All right? And within this get help text by key function, instead of this variable, I'm actually going to create an instance of this class, help text. So help text, help text equals new help text. And we are going to populate these two properties, key and text. So here, you know, whatever response we get from the database, so we actually get the help text from the database. So we are using this help text object, and I'm going to populate the text property. And similarly, let's populate the key property to the help text key. So we are receiving that as a parameter into this function. So let's use that parameter. All right. So we have the help text object, and we are returning that help text object after populating both the properties. Now we have a compilation error here because this function at the moment is returning string. So let's change the return type to help text. All right. So at the moment, our get help text by key function is returning in a help text object. So within our page load event, we want to convert that help text object into JSON format. And to do that, I'm going to use JavaScript serializer class. This class is present in a different namespace. That is system.web.script.serialization. So here, let's go ahead and create an instance of JavaScript serializer class. Let's call it JS. So new JavaScript serializer. And this object has got serialize method. And to this function, we want to pass the object that we want to serialize. So the object that we want to serialize is whatever this function returns, 
get help text by key. So I'm going to cut that code and paste it right there. So let's get rid of this. So what is this function going to return? JSON serialize, I mean serialize method of the JavaScript serializer class. It's returning a string back, that is the JSON string. So let's store it in a variable. Let's call it JSON string equals whatever we get back. And the final thing that we want to do is write it to the response stream. All right, so at the moment, this get help text.aspx page is actually returning a JSON string. So now let's go back to this HTML page one dot HTML and look at this. Let's get rid of now we are not getting HTML data. So let me actually remove that data type parameter. Let's build the solution and let's go ahead and reload this page and see what's going to happen. Look at this when the field receives focus, we get the entire JSON string displayed. Look at that. We get both the key and text properties, the entire JSON string. But that's not what we want. We want just the text property from the JSON object. So to achieve that, here, the first thing that I'm going to do is specify the type of data we are expecting. The type is JSON. And you know this is the callback function. So this response parameter is going to receive that JSON object. And this object is now going to have those two properties, text and key. We want to display the text property value. So I'm simply going to say response.text. So let's save the changes. Let's reload this page and look at this. When the field receives focus, now we get only the text. If you want the key as well, maybe you can say response dot key and let's separate them with a colon symbol. So let's save the changes. Let's reload this page and look at this. When the field receives focus, now we get both the key and text properties. Thank you for listening and have a great day.